This is the taste that I'm always looking for. We're sitting in a project called Mãos, which means hands in Portuguese. Um, it's a small venue um, where we cook for 16 guests every night, well, four nights a week. Um, and uh, we create a, a very intimate experience. Uh, we cook, um, we cook whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun of it. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of people are aging their meats, but I don't think people understand why they've been doing it and what actually happens. What is that process? Why does this Why does this meat work better than than this meat? Why does this vegetable ferment better than this vegetable? It's so important to understand the reason why, because once you understand that, then you open up so many more so many more doors. Being able to extract extract umami from from meat and fish is an exciting exciting process yeah, for us. Yeah. There's an increase in umami levels as a result of the process that we're following mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to basically document those processes um, as we go through them, analyze them, then apply them to different products to see how they react. It's, it's a great it's a great tool you know mm -hmm. to have to, to work when we start understand how to work with those products and start to develop that. It's definitely helped us to understand why these, why the enzymes are breaking down, why these flavors, why these flavors are coming out of, uh, of the um, proteins or vegetables. And you're able to develop a really powerful, very interesting a profile flavor that, that you've not seen before, in a sense. These are scalps that we get from a, dry, from a diver, who basically is able to deliver them to us on the day. So he catches them in the morning and we get them here at 5 p.m. to serve them at, at 7. Um, we save all the rows and we use them to create this broth. We have a farmer who cultivates mushrooms for us. So one is the shiitake mushrooms, which we just salt and then dry. And then this is a uh, fresh, fresh kombu from, uh, from Cornwall. So all three ingredients get infused into a tea, which we're going to pour over the scallop. Uh, and what's really nice is that we don't have to use any, we don't have to use any additional seasonings because each ingredient has its own natural profile flavor. We, we serve the enoki mushrooms in two different ways. We have these, which are a little cluster that we just sear in a pan really, really nicely. Then we have these guys, which are, this is the um, a floss. So we, uh, we pick them apart and let them dehydrate in little patterns. So we just, we just very, very lightly, very, very lightly season the scallop and the enoki mushrooms. Obviously, we want all the flavor to come from, from the broth. So we don't want to over season it. And on top of these, the seared, the seared enoki, enoki mushrooms, which we found that when you, you know, when you sear enoki mushrooms, it gives off a really nice uh, meaty flavor. So we have the, the broth that has been made with the scallop rose, with the, um, the royal kombu and the shiitake mushrooms. We gently warm it up and then we infuse it into the tea basically. So we do use a tea style infusion. So we pour it over, again, more shiitake mushrooms, more scallop rose, dry scallop rose, and more kombu. So this is the enoki floss. We pour the nice little broth over it. And the scallops dance a little bit. You can see that they're moving a little bit in there. area. Yeah. It's very rare to be able to go to any restaurant and have a scallop, yeah. which has just been shucked out of the, out of the shell. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. If we were taught this, if we were taught about umami, almost as if it was a, a subject, um, young chefs would be able to, to use it at a much, much earlier stage. Umami is the taste that I'm looking for, and that's when the food tastes the best.